What is up guys, future me here coming to fix what past me didn't do the first time around. So before we get into this video, I had already attempted to do some spark plugs and wire changes. Through some laziness and some conflict, I only decided to change the spark plug wires the last time I worked on this. Now the goal was just to eliminate the check engine light and hopefully the vehicle run better. It started to run better, but Future Me is now experiencing a check engine light again. Now tomorrow, this vehicle is actually going on a dyno to get tuned and figure out exactly how it's running and get it even closer prepped for the track. But before I do that, I do want to try to eliminate that check engine code. And if I can't, it's okay. But I want to make sure that I got my best foot forward. I've already changed the plug wires. The car did eliminate the code for some time, but now it's back. So we're going to go ahead and actually do what we were supposed to do the last time and actually commit to changing the spark plugs as well. Let's get started. I did get a random misfire the other day and I just want to make sure that all is okay. When I popped the hood on the vehicle, I did find that I do got one mismatched wire out of the eight. I got one MSD and the other ones are fire cores. So again, just for my sanity to make sure that they're all firing off the same way, we're gonna go ahead and replace them with some Texas Speed 10 millimeter wires and some NGK TR6s uh, for the plugs. Now, after it gets tuned, I might change to a colder plug or a different plug sequence, but until it kinda goes through a tuner, I kinda wanna match what it's already running and keep it as is. Let's get started. One of the good things about the, uh, the car already has, already it has the, uh, it has the fire sleeving on there for protection against burning up for you know the headers and those sorts of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and reuse these. Um, like I said, the NGKs are basically what's gonna be put on here. Um, they're already pre-gapped, but I'm gonna match the gapping that is currently on the vehicle because it was tuned prior to my ownership and I just kinda wanna make sure that it's running the same exact method. And like I said, I did go with the Texas Speed plug wires. Now, when you go online, you kind of ask around what everyone's running. Um, you know, you still have quite a large batch of people obviously running the more obvious MSDs. You have the AC Duckle guys. Um, and then you have a lot of people running the Axle 9000 series, which is their ceramic series meant for high heat. Um, not too many people really mention Texas Speed ones. Um, this was through a friend's recommendation. And basically one of the reasons that kind of just sold me to go with this route was because these are actually 10 millimeter wires. Now the axles and everybody else are about an eight and a half, which don't get me wrong, a manufacturer recommends eight and a half is actually really, really good for low interference. Uh, but I think, you know, for the sake of, you know, high heat temperatures and those such things, any kind of added insulation that I can get on the plug wires uh, for more consistency is better. So I'm gonna run these and see how they run. Uh, right now, the car is running about an eight and a half as well. So I don't expect a performance change. I just want, you know, additional security. The, the goal to get this car out on the track is just to make sure that on this first initial runs is that the vehicle is safe and happy, meaning the fluids are good, the, the ignition is good, and obviously the fuel is good. So we're gonna start this process now, start pulling the plugs. Got myself a little swivel here with a 5 8 socket. I'm gonna go ahead and back these out. Uh, start pulling all the plug wires on it, start replacing the plugs. I'll match it with my feeder gauge um, and get this thing done. You guys can see that right there, but it looks like we hit a pretty major roadblock, as you can tell. These coil packs are dry rotted. No matter how I slide them off, they all are breaking. A few moments later. All right, so we just spoke about that frustration point where all of these ignition coils actually were dry rotted and brittle. But you know, after like further inspection, uh, the spark plug boots and the spark plugs can spark plug wire, sorry, can still connect. Uh, without any issues. I did start it right after replacing these four and I will say that original check engine light that caused me to kind of play with the spark plugs and wires um, went away and the car started up just fine. So I went ahead and did the other side. What I have not done is going to be the actual spark plugs. They're a little bit tighter than I feel comfortable turning potentially not knowing this vehicle and who 
previously torqued them. I am going to change my wrench style just to see if I can get them off. But right now, if I was just playing the process of elimination game, the car seems to be running better with just the wire changes. Keep in mind, like I said, these were the original wires on the car, right? I had all these fire comps and one random MSD. My theory is this little guy right here was probably throwing a slight misfire. So I was able to get all the boots on. So we got the fire retardant boots there for the heat shielding. Uh, we got all the TSPs nice and installed. Now it's just to kind of take a test ride to make sure that it is running properly. Last time I made this attempt, I didn't have the, well, so the last time I actually made an attempt to go ahead and change these spark plugs, I was experiencing extreme tightness on trying to remove them. And I was a little concerned that they were a little too over tight. And being my first couple of weeks with the cars, I didn't want to experience any sort of damage being caused by me forcing them off. So I went ahead, got myself a larger socket wrench and was able to quickly pop one off and go ahead and replace them. Now, You'll see past me bought the TR6s and GKs. So at least past me got that right. We got the same exact spark plugs going right back in it. Like I say further on the video, I do want to match the same exact setup it has. The only difference is it's running consistent wires versus before it was running a black. It was running, I forget the brands already at this point, but it was running two different types. I'm going to go ahead and match the same gapping and go ahead and get them installed. One of the things I need to make sure and I do is make sure that that gapping is exactly the same one to the other. That way, we know that they're firing exactly the same. So it's not that one. These are getting thinner. I would say this one is just about right. We're gonna go to 30 over just to kind of see how that one fits. This one is exactly snug. Let's see here. Fantastic. They have the same exact spacing. I will double check all the other plugs, but for the most part, I can pretty much rock and roll these as long as they match. So let's get moving. So you see on earlier on the video when I'm doing the wires that I pretty much back away from doing the plugs, mainly because they were so tight, tighter than I have ever had to back out a plug and then not knowing this car and really understanding it, only having it about a week, I was a little concerned that I could potentially, you know, either strip it or break something and then it'd be more catastrophic. Um, but obviously with the check engine light returning, it became more apparent that I needed to get it done. Um, so, you know, I kind of just went ahead and got myself yeah, I upgraded up to a half inch socket so I can go ahead and uh, have a bit more grip and a little bit more torque and just a bit more confidence in my, uh, my ability to remove it slowly. And uh, everything has turned out just fine. If you're looking to torque this a factory spec, I do believe it's 11 pounds. Now I just done this so many times. I basically just feel it out. I don't go overly insane worrying about the torque specs of this. I don't over torque it either. Um, basically once I feel like it's already checking me, I basically will give it another eighth turn at that point and kind of leave it at that spot there. Now this car does have the heat sleeves, which really makes it, um, well protected for the high heat Sebring track uses that it's going to see. And again, reminder, I'm using the Texas speed. 10 millimeter wires because these are a bit more thicker than the standard axles that are 8.5 and all the other competitors that are 8.5. Um, so let's see how these hold off on the track when we put them out there. Just like that, all the plugs have been changed. I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a quick start. It is a little later in the evening now, so I'm just gonna get a quick start, let it idle. If no check engine light is on or no really rough idle, I will take it out for a test rip in the morning before the dyno session. Let's see what happens. See what happens.
engine light is still on after the startup last time when I did just the wires. As soon as I started the car, the check engine was gone. I do have an OBD scanner here. I will reset it in the morning before I take it to the dyno. And I'll let him take a look at it. I'll let him take a look over it and make sure that, you know, there's nothing else that needs to be done at this point. Um, the previous owner, I think I might have mentioned earlier on the video, mentioned that this was a common thing, that he would just erase the code, it would go away for a while and come back. At least now we know we have brand new plugs, brand new wires, and we'll find out what she does tomorrow on the dyno, make sure that all her parameters are correct and get it at one step closer to being ready to go out on the racetrack. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.